Mysterious gray mass found on beach. Scientists identify rare creature. In 2019, a gray mass was discovered off the coast of Santa Barbara, Coal Oil Point Reserve in Southern California. Unfortunately, there were initially difficulties in identifying the creature. The only characteristic was the extraordinary size of the strange figure. After the images spread on social media, marine biologists came to the rescue. What was it really about? A seven-foot-long, 600-pound creature that washes up on the beach cannot be ignored, especially by the staff at Southern California's Coal Oil Point Reserve. At first, they had no idea what it could be. Well, that's not entirely true. They recognized some similarities with other creatures, but frowned as they approached the thing. What was the sea creature and how did it end up on a California beach? At first, experts at the Coal Oil Point Reserve thought it was a sunfish. The type of fish is, after all, one of the greatest freshes on Earth. Some of them can even weigh up to 2,000 pounds. And while the gray mass might not be that far from a sunfish, some aspects weren't what they envisioned. The creature was big enough to be a sunfish, but was it really? Coal Oil Point Reserve employees found the creature off the coast of Santa Barbara, California in 2019. The creature had already passed away right at the feet of the environmentalists who had made it their life's work to study such creatures. The reservoir is protected by the University of California, Santa Barbara, and is one of the best examples of coastal environments. Hopefully, researchers would soon have an idea of what the animal was. The reservoir faced the Pacific Ocean, so there's a large amount of sea creatures, fauna, and vegetation anyway. Researchers have no shortage of incredible animals to identify in the depths. But what kind of fish could it be? The intern who spotted the animal said it just looked like a gray mass. This was true, at least until he and the other staff got closer to see the body. Jessica Nielsen, a naturalist, told press at the University of California, Santa Barbara, that she was shocked at first. Nothing like this had ever washed up in the reservoir. Unlike other animals, this one had strange characteristics that she couldn't place. In an interview, she said, this is definitely the most remarkable organism I've ever seen washed up. After all, I've been working here for four whole years. It seems to be getting really mysterious. After posting the strange creature on the reserve's Facebook page, they waited to see if anyone online might have an idea. Eventually, biologist Thomas Turner showed interest in the mystery. As an evolutionary biologist, he would surely have an answer to the big question, wouldn't he? Unfortunately, he too was as speechless as Nielsen. He even brought his wife and son to see the thing for himself on the beach. During an interview with CNN in February 2019, Turner said, It's very unusual fish, that's for sure, because it doesn't have a caudal fin. All of its teeth are fused together, so it kind of just has a round opening for a mouth. In addition, reference must also be made to the size of the animal. Turner signaled the incredible size by spreading his arms during the interview. He said the animal was definitely six feet long. Just unbelievable. With no tail fin, an impossibly large body, and 600 pounds, the Coal Oil Point Reserve's research team concluded the animal must actually be a large sunfish, also known as a mola mola. The team posted pictures of their find on iNaturalist, a social media platform for environmentalists, to see if anyone else had any opinions. It was again confirmed it was a sunfish they had found. All was not as it seemed, though. A fish expert at the South Australian Museum, Ralph Foster, had a different opinion and threw out the theory the team had put forward in California. Foster looked at the animal and said it wasn't a normal sunfish. He actually thought that this animal probably didn't correspond to an already documented fish species. With his new thought, he turned to someone who probably knew the answer to the mystery. Unsure if his opinion was right, he decided to contact Marianne Nyagard a marine biologist. After writing her reply in an email and a letter with photos attached, he waited and hoped for a reply soon. A hint at this point would have been extremely useful. Unfortunately, she wasn't particularly moved by the pictures and said she didn't have a solution to this problem either. The creature remained unidentified. Nyagard did not give up directly on identifying the animal. She asked for better visual support to be sure of things. During an interview with CNN, she said, the images just weren't very clear, so I was reluctant. She now had a new task. She wanted to find out, with Foster, what creature was on the shore of the reserve. 
so she turned to Nielsen and Turner for better, higher quality images. Nielsen and Turner were more than willing to go back and snap some better photos so the scientists could form a better opinion. But then they encountered a new problem when the two came to the beach. The creature was no longer to be found. A few days had passed since the discovery and the tide had come and taken the creature back with it. But they wouldn't give up that easily. The search was well structured. Nielsen and Turner started on opposite sides of the beach and approached the middle. Maybe they'd find the animal there again. They had to try. And they were right. Just a little way from where they originally found the animal lay the gray mass. Now they managed to take some better quality pictures and send them to the two scientists. With any luck, the pictures would help with the answer. While taking the pictures, Nielsen and Turner noticed something about the mysterious creature. They saw something they hadn't noticed before. They discovered some characteristics that could potentially be particularly helpful in the case. Now all they had to do was forward the images to Foster and Nyagard. It felt like they were about to have a breakthrough. What sea creature did they find? Soon they'll know for sure. In 2019, Nielsen told the University of California, Santa Barbara website, The Current, it was really exciting to get the images because I might be able to help with this unusual discovery. That would be fascinating. The excitement was really unbelievable. As soon as the photos got into Nyagard's hands, the animal could be identified. Nyagard told CNN that she almost fell out of her chair when she realized what the scientists had found there. After the second round of photos taken by Nielsen and Turner arrived, Nyagard actually managed to identify the creature. Instead of a normal sunfish, it appeared to be a molatecta, also known as a hoodwinker fish. Interestingly, in 2017, it was Nyagard herself who was allowed to determine the name and species of this fish. There are so many different sunfish species that it can sometimes be difficult to identify them exactly. Sunfish were first discovered in 1758. At that time, however, it was thought that there was only one ordinary sunfish, and there was no mention of the many species. The discovery was made later. Only much later was a new species of sunfish discovered, namely in the Southern Hemisphere, off the coast of Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, and other countries. Only Nyagard herself decided to devote herself to the mysterious creatures. During an interview with CNN, Nyagard said, The hoodwinker mostly goes unnoticed because nobody knows the difference. There's a long history of confusion with the sunfish family. This fish just manages to never be sighted. It's usually just mistaken for a mola mola, but it's actually a mola tecta. At first, Nyagard hadn't thought of the mola tecta because it's not normally found anywhere near the United States. In an interview with The Guardian, Nyagard explained, I've only spotted the mola tecta in cold water so far. It has to be said that it's really extraordinary for this fish to suddenly approach California. She went on to explain which waters the Molateca actually likes to be in, definitely in the Southern Hemisphere. However, it's not entirely unlikely that fish will also seek out new territories. It's just exciting for the scientific community. Nyagard told CNN, The discovery of the species is actually the very first in America, and indeed in the Northern Hemisphere. It's obviously very exciting for a marine biologist. Then, in an interview with The Current, Nyagard described her enthusiasm at being able to identify the fish. Molateca was only recently discovered, and there's still so much to learn about this species. I'm so glad we were able to help researchers identify the animal.